So let's get, let's get into when now it becomes WCW's Ted Turner's WCW. How does that transition from where you're at and you guys got your guy? How does that happen? Same shit you said. Oh, I know. <laughs> but that's what I want to hear because yeah. how did that transition happen? How did it happen? Uh, it's called money. Necessity. That necessity for money. Time sales we had but they weren't coming in on a regular basis, you know, 180 days, even longer. And, and just goes on and on and on. And Ted Turner looks and says, you're a small fish. I'm a big fish and I'm going to eat you up. And he said, I, if you don't sell to me, I'll kick you off and I can stand it longer than you can. Truth. That's true. And guess what? He was right. Mm. So, you know, and, I, you know, I'm going to say this, Jimmy had already made his deal at Ted. Uh, and he wanted it. I didn't, I didn't, I did, I did not No, I respect you so I much. I did not, I did not. And I, well, I fought it, fought it. And then as I call was the mother car, my mother came to me and said, David, you, you're going to do this. I said, it's not right. You he said, right. yeah. And Rick Flint, Rick, what are you going to go? He said, mm -mm, mm -mm. and I, I trying to get some people lined up for it and I ran out of time. And, you know, it's, the rest is history. But the thing is, Ted was the only one that wanted us. Nobody on the board of directors. Yeah. The, the, that company Nobody. never helped anybody no. in our business. Wait a minute. Then. <laughs> Jack Petrie, he's the first one on the, on the board to get us. He, he didn't want us, but everybody saw, oh, God, we can add this to their budget and this to their budget. And, and you know, uh, for syndication and you name it, editing, all this. So, you know, we were, as far as paper money, as I call it, play money. Yeah. You know, they, they used us as cash cow, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and made it, their numbers look good. Our numbers look horrible. Yeah, we did. And nothing worked until Bill Shaw, who was an, an original Turner guy, he was head of HR, and he said, I'll take it. Told Ted, I'll take it. And what he, year was that? Golly. Boom. Do ask for numbers. Shortly after that, uh, he uh, paid Hogan to come over. Okay. Because I remember, because that's where Bischoff had told me. Right. That he had the idea of bringing Hulk in. Right. And though, let's go before that. Let's go to the Disney thing where we're going to go to Disney. And that was Eric. Yeah, it was yeah. Eric. And bringing away. Well, the Olympics. Right. Because that's what we thought the traffic was going to be super bad yeah. and go down there. And that Eric had told me that, as I remember, I was just 20 right. something years ago. tell you about Disney. Yeah, you know, he said, this is what we went down there. He said, oh, this is what we're going to do. And we're going to set up, you know, right at the entrance of Disney MGM. I said, sure, sure. And he said, no, that's what I want you to do. And I went, eh, okay. You know, and so I, I got with uh, our, our people and we figured it out. And that's what we did. We set it up, you know, uh, at the entrance to Disney MGM. We used their editing facilities there, you know for editing, you know, the matches and so forth, uh, uh, set tapes back to Atlanta. We were there for six weeks. We're, yes. Yeah. That's what, yeah. Yeah. We stayed at the Marriott suites, I think. And the resident, the resident, yeah, resident, resident, yeah, resident, yeah. resident yeah. 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 And down there for six weeks. And I, uh, I remember basically Fish telling us, remember the restaurant? Yeah, that was a great, oh. that was, that was a great restaurant. Um, but that was, uh, what year was that? 93. 93. Yeah. 93? 93 is when Shaw took over. Okay. Yeah. The but, Olympics, but, Olympics, but, Olympics, oh, the Olympics were 96. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let me ask you, let's go back a little farther than that. Um, because this is how I was brought, originally brought up my grab into this. Um, and what had happened was, I, I want to say, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but there was a year where Dusty left and he left, I don't know if it was when WCW 
um, came together. This is before he ever went to WWF because he came to Florida. All right. And he now went when Jack Petrick took over, he brought Jim Hurd in. <laughs> right. The pizza guy, right? Yeah. <clears throat> As <clears throat> he, uh, you know, he was an old military guy and he, he and Dusty clashed. Yeah. Clash. You know, he wanted, you know, it's black and white. It's, there's no right. way and you're going to do it this way. And that's just not what you do. Yeah. And so dreams is, so this is how my initial time I meet Dusty, right? but I don't get to meet him yet. Um, Mike Graham calls me probably about 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm a nightclub guy, so I'm up till three or four, but I got to get to bed because I got an early flight. Cause it's, I work for the AWA one day a week, one day, one day a month. And we filmed four TVs. I got strep throat and I hear my phone go off and I'm just glad to go to the answer machine. Then I hear Michael's voice, PDP, pick up the phone. It's Michael Graham. I'm in, wake up. If you're sleeping, wake up, come on, pick up the phone. I'm sitting here with Dusty Rhodes. Mike, how you doing? It's like, uh, he goes, I'm sitting here with Dusty Rhodes. We're going to pop Florida. Dusty's coming back in. We're going to pop the territory. And, you know, these talk, we're talking about Gary Hart, talking about baby doll. And, you know, we want to see, uh, you know, yeah, I, I've been telling him about you. You know, you're a young face, that, you know, fresh face, really hasn't been seen that much. I said, he goes, I want you to get on the phone and treat him like the biggest mark ever, kind of promo on him. I go, Mike, Mike, I got strep throat. I got nothing prepared. I go, put, put my tape in. He goes, VCR is broken. You're up. Good God, that's the rules. That's all about it. Man, I went on. I stole everything he ever said. Albano, myself, whatever, <laughs> for about 30 seconds. And I said, that's all I got. <laughs> I got strep throat. Silence. Dusty? Dusty? I think he fucking hung up there or something, right? And then I hear, well, that a recording kid. <laughs> <laughs> and he, we ended up talking and he, he brought me up there that next week when I came back from AWX. I'm still running my nightclub in Fort Myers, Florida. I quit my day job. I'm not making any money. And uh, he brought me up there and he asked me about myself. I told my story. Gordon Soley was there. My friend was there. Steve Kern was there. And uh, at the end, he said, well, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make you the Jeffy Ventura of the 90s. And I said, color commentating? Dusty, I don't know a wrist lock or a wristwatch. I said, I, I can't do that. He said, no, don't worry about it. Gordon Foley going to walk you through it all. And uh, uh, that's how I got up there. And that's when I yeah, Bob Langata, he's got him stretched over the road. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, he, different large well, yeah, he, he always had the medical turn. Yeah, yeah. He like, should, this guy should operate. Well, third minute parcel. <laughs> <laughs> it should be outlawed. This definitely goes to the brain. Uh, yeah. but, but, but Mike and I got really tight over that period. I was there for, yeah, you know, I'd be up there every Tuesday to film TV. And at some point dust left because right. they never bombed, but they went up there and they made, I, I look at, when I look at Dusty, it was John Wayne meets Elvis, you know, well, it was charismatic humans alive and they put him in polka dots, wow. which was like the right. biggest John Wayne no. meets yeah. Elvis. No, that's that's all it was about. Or, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 And that's the same reason they put Dustin is gold dust. Right. Mm -hmm. It was all about humiliation. One thing Vince McMahon did that it just made me want to throw up is when you got ready to leave, or if you really wanted that job, he wanted to humiliate. He wanted to break your spirit. And that's just fucking wrong. No, well, that well, sucked. Look at, look at. Terry Taylor, the red. No, I know, I know. Dude. Yeah, he was. That was a hell of a lot of stories. Oh, I hope no, and that's you know, that's my only bitch about this. Yeah, he screwed me on some money. Yeah, he could have done this. He could have done that. That's okay. But when you try to break a man's spirit and humiliate, why is that? Why? Why? Why is your dick so little? 
that you have. All to right, let's this. not go there. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, the bottom line is both those guys uh, got, both those guys got that gimmick over. Yeah. You know, what what you know a great worker can. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Fucking Dustin got it over and Dustin. In the in the 